Welcome back. <laughs> Speaking more slowly. <laughs> Welcome back. This is Microsoft Virtual Academy. This is the developer's guide for Windows 10 Insider Preview. I'm Jerry. I'm here with Andy. Andy. Happy to announce that you have made it. This is the, not the penultimate, this is the ultimate, the final, the Grand Slam session. And we're going to talk today, this session about this chapter, this yes. moment this module about what if you have a Windows 8 or Windows 8.1 application and you're ready to bring it over to Windows 10 and take advantage of all the capabilities, take advantage of that new store, take advantage of that one experience, take advantage of the one billion installs by the year, just a couple years from now, I forget the year, but it was, oh my gosh, how aggressive. What if you <laughs> want to take advantage of all of that and do it? Well, you're going to need to port that application over. Fortunately for you, we happen to have the porting expert of the world, present in this room. He's sitting right next to me. It's true. And he's going to walk you through all of the details and show you how quick and easy it is, but also difficult. how many, there are a couple <laughs> little caveats and it is yeah. sort of difficult if you, uh, if you skip any of the steps, but it's going to be a good session. Be sure and take some notes. <laughs> Thanks, Jerry. Wow. Okay, follow that. Good luck. Yeah, good luck with that, yes. Yeah, no, I'd like to say also, if you have followed us through all of this uh, live streaming, uh, congratulations. Uh, let me just shake your hand. Or, you. or apologies. Apologies, yeah. <laughs> Especially, yeah. Anyway, look, let's move on. Migration paths to Windows 10 is what we're going to talk about. Talking about, you know, where your starting point is and what your experience can you can expect if you're trying to bring your existing assets up onto creating a UWP app. Um, I'm going to do a specific project then. I'm going to actually do a, a, the, most of this is going to be just a demo because it's actually the best way of learning about it. Because right. there's a few things you'll trip over, a few things you need to be aware of. Um, so uh, that's the best way of, of figuring that out. Is this going to be it. smoke and mirrors, or are you going to do a real upgrade? It's a real upgrade of a well. It's an existing. Uh, it's a, an old favorite, a Contoso cookbook app. Oh, yeah. But it's it's you know it's quite sophisticated it's got a lot of content it's got a lot of features in sort of um, sharing and and these kind of things so it's, it's a nice uh, it's a nice sample that's very nice yeah all right so I mean what you know why do you want to do this so the first thing to say actually is you don't have to do this because uh, if you've got an existing app that you've developed for 8 and 8 one uh, it will run on 10 on the same class of device that it was created for. That's important to say. That is very important to say because the big win for moving to UWP, of course, is that uh, by doing that, you can easily extend your app out to, uh, to, to broaden the number of targets it can run on. So um, it's been said at the keynote that there's going to be over 1 billion devices running Windows 10 within a, a short period of time. Mm -hmm. And if you want to get that, you know, target that addressable base with your app and get it out onto a, a broad range of Windows 10 devices, then UWP is the platform for doing that. And all the new features we've got in, in XAML, for example, about building um, reactive designs, responsive designs, sorry, get that right, um, so that your UI can adapt across different devices. All that stuff is in UWP, so you'll need to do that upgrade if you want to take advantage of that. That's right. Perfect. So let's look at the starting points, the migration paths, if you like, if where you're coming from and, and you know what your expectation can be. So first of all, let's look at the... Uh, Windows 8.0, 8.1 store apps. Now, the first thing to say about UWP is it is a superset of the WinRT API set that you are already used to programming with. So that's great. If I've taken the time to learn all the namespaces and interaction models of yeah. Windows 8, that just flows into 10. It's not all net new. No, that's right. So the majority of your code will move across just without any updates needed. And then, of course, once you're on UWP, you can take advantage of the, I forget the figure that they quoted, like 2,500 new features that are in yeah. UWP. Like so it's 6, a massive. 6,000 new APIs Yeah, or it's, it's a huge expansion once you get to UWP. But your existing 8081 code um, should move across with, uh, without, any, without many changes. With 6,000 new APIs, it's fair to say that this MVA, three days long, <laughs> Still didn't cover up all of them. Uh, no, 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 missed Not a few. Most of them. Most, most of them. them. Not the important ones. We no. were, no, it's curated. We yeah. picked the list that was best for the XAML developer to be successful. We did. Yeah. We did. I like yes. the way that sounds. That curated. sounds very good. I like that. It's a curated yes. list of information. That's nice. I didn't mean to interrupt you. 
It's all right. I'm, I'm used um, to it. I'm used to it. Um, <laughs> back to this. Yeah, and then, of course, you will need to do some work or will want to do some work in order to create a responsive design. So if you have developed for, you know, you've been expecting to work on a, a tablet sort of form factor, um, you, you're probably going to want to, at the very least, maybe uh, create a great design for your phone, which actually will often be similar or close to the narrow screen, because uh, obviously if, even in 8081, your store apps can be resized by the user. They can, he, can put, they can, he or she can put them side by side and resize the windows. So that narrow width, screen width, is going to be pretty, you know, a good starting point for creating a nice UI for your phone. And you can extend it, obviously, beyond that to uh, Team, which is the Surface Hub, and, oh, I don't know, HoloLens? Use your imagination where you can take it. Quantum. Windows Quantum. Windows Quantum. Oh, you're giving it away again, Jerry. So small, you nobody's must, ever noticed you it. You must. <laughs> <laughs> All right. What about Windows Phone 8.1 store apps? These are the ones built using WinRT. This was the new developer model for phone devs in 8.1. But what it was, this was the universal app story in 8.1. This is the same API set that you have with uh, Windows uh, Store apps, 8.0 and 8.1. So you will not be surprised to hear that, of course, on the code side of things, it's a pretty similar story. So what about the UI side of things? Well, actually, before I talk about the UI, just before we leave the code, oh. there are a few deprecated APIs. There were some, some patterns that were phone only that were brought in, particularly to handle uh, low memory phones, but yes. those have gone. And those are the continuation APIs? Oh, that's right. So a little bit of work there. Yeah, now the UI. Yeah, yeah. Well, then again, you probably. It's just XAML, right? It's just XAML. It's the same XAML. So but. You'll certainly be able to take that and create a pretty, in, without much effort, create yourself a nice Windows Mobile UI. But again, yeah. you've got to do that work to expand that design out. If I just take my XAML and drop it into a U UWP app, yep. it's not going to look exactly the same. No, no. The scale factors have changed a little bit. The um, style names, um, often the style names move across. When we're going to go into all of this, so there's a few things that you need to stand, need to, you don't expect it to just go across and just look great. You're going to have to do a little bit of tweaking. Great. Um, and what about universal apps? This is this uh, where you have a dual-headed That sounds project. painful. <laughs> dual-headed, yes. Zaphod Beeblebrox. Zaf wow. Yeah. He was a he was a universal app. Did you know that? <laughs> he was. He had shared code right, right, right here. <laughs> <laughs> so if you have one of these things with where you're creating a phone app package and a store package, then well, okay. Again, all your code will move across uh, without much change. Um, you've got to think about what you want to do with the the UX. So um, there's a couple of courses of action here. So um, the most Prob probable way you're going to want to handle this is to uh, sort of merge it into one. So you're going to create a responsive UI by drawing on the different UI designs you might have implemented in your phone head and your tablet head. And you'll, you'll kind of work those into uh, a responsive UI using the techniques that we, we have gone through on the adaptive UI uh, module in, on this course. Um, you could actually keep them as separate. There's, uh, there's ways of, you could actually implement separate navigation paths in your project, in your UWP solution. So you could actually still navigate to separate pages over on the on UWP side. But Sometimes that may be the right decision just to be. simplify your UI. And because from time to time, you're going to be targeting a device that's so different yeah. that uh, try and combine them all is really overcomplicates your XAML tree. That's right, yeah. And obviously, if we start talking about extending out to Xbox or something where it really is probably quite different uh, user experience that you're aiming for, that's often the, the good course of action, even on the UWP side. So, Right, the last one just to talk about is Windows Phone Silverlight. So we're talking about Windows Phone Silverlight 7.x, uh, 8.0, or even 8.1 apps. Now, again, all of these will run on Windows Mobile devices. So uh, you're not being forced. You're not going to have to throw all this away and forced into this upgrade. But again, if you want to take advantage of the huge platform and take your app and expand out to new users on, 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 on big tablets or convertibles or even way up, up the tree to across the broad range of devices running, uh, running Windows 10, uh, then you'll need to move it over to, uh, to UWP. So Lots of developers were on Silverlight because there, were fun there was functionality not in WinRT. So no. what the good news is, of course, 
all of that functionality now is, so there's no, there are no more blockers to have to stay on Silverlight. No, that's right. Now, in this, in this area, um, essentially talking about a, a rewrite, let's not beat around the bush here, but we have got some tools that were announced at Build that are coming along. We're not ready to show those just yet. Uh, but these porting tools will take you a good way along the road with your Silverlight app and get it, get it into a, uh, a, a WinRT-based uh, project, and then you can then take it forward and finish the work off. So um, we're doing a lot of work to make that migration as easy as possible for you. Um, and uh, we'll you know, watch this space for more information on that. This space? Not particularly this space, watch, but watch, metaphorical watch space. space. A space. Yeah. It's coming along. We will, we will announce space. when we are ready to do so. That's right. MSDN.com. MSDN.com. Yeah, it will be there. Yeah. Probably. So. Dev.windows.com. Yes. Dev.windows.com, which is the yeah our dev center for all things to do with UWP 8.1 uh, and Silverlight. Got it. So, yeah, in summary, yeah. App lifecycle, background execution, tars and toasts, and all this kind of stuff, all the stuff that you're used to using in 8.1 WinRT apps, all that moves across. It's all good news. Um, we've got a few things that we need to look, uh, look at. I'm going to leave those to the demo because uh, that nicely calls it out. Your WinRT XAML UI ports across fairly easily. Silverlight, well, you can salvage parts of it. It's still XAML. You know, so if you had good design pr principles, right, and you were doing an yep. MVVM solution, you had your view models, yep. you had your classes out, you had portable class libraries, converters, and things like that. There's zero change to those. So if you've done a really great job of building out good patterns in your application, you're going to get paid back now, right? That's really great. Yep. Yeah. Absolutely. That's it's right. not just um, good patterns always are your friend as a developer, and it just helps you to be uh, adaptive and to. Yeah, reuse assets right. and uh, make make uh, this kind of uh, design patterns aren't just toys for developers. No, they're not. Right? They really do pay back. They really yeah. do. This is a great example of where it's going to come in. Sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt you there. No, no, no you didn't. Not I at all. know it. He's just the most polite guy ever. <laughs> Gosh, this is nearly over. Right, moving on. Porting. Hey, well, let's look at an example. <laughs> Let's look oh, it's been again. a delight. It's been a delight, Jerry. Oh, great. Wow, well, that didn't sound like it was. <laughs> <laughs> no, you looked at me and thinking, like, is he serious? What in the world? Gosh, why did I make you godfather of my children? No <laughs> point now. All right, now let, let's talk about um, the process of moving an 8.1 project, which is an um, easy starting point, if you like. So, first of all, Easiest. The easiest starting point, yes. So um, first of all, there is no, in, the, in Visual Studio at the moment, there is no way of uh, right-clicking on an 8.1 project and saying upgrade to UWP. Um, it's some, we're, we're looking at that and uh, wondering whether to, to do all that. But actually, it's kind of one of those yeah. things the dev community tends to do pretty well. Yeah, that's right. Um, including us. So including us. Including us. We've written a very basic PowerShell script, but actually we did this in the, uh, the earlier MVA, where, which was a company of the very first release of the tools for... Uh, still dev. works. And that's still, well... It now, you say we've written. I did most of the work. <laughs> Jerry. <laughs> yeah, that's right. I think... I'm not going to even argue about that one. Yeah. So <laughs> now, what I was going to say is that one of our MVPs actually has put a, a Visual Studio put a Visual Studio extension into the uh, the gallery to do this in a nice integrated way and adds that right click experience. And I'm sure the Dev community will do the same. Um, for us, we're giving you, we're offering you this PowerShell script, um, so you can go to aka.ms/uwp-project-upgrade-utility for a Let's be clear, a very basic conversion utility. Uh, and um, let's see, and your email for support? <laughs> yeah, no, it's, it's <laughs> unsupported. No, no, you can... You can Gates at Microsoft. Yeah. And it's up, it's up on, it's actually, this is where you can get it, but it's actually up on GitHub, so we'll be yeah. very happy to uh, take contributions for anybody who wants to make it even better. Yeah, and to be honest about it, we may not make any more contributions to it. Oh, that's right. It's, it was a tool we created to help us take samples from 8.1 and make them work on UWP for the purposes of this and other training. That's right. So what it does is it automates most of the upgrade steps to your project file, csproj file, and the package manifest. That's what it does. It run, you can run it directly in PowerShell. Um, if you've got the, uh, 
um, script execution turned on in if you, directly from PowerShell. And if you don't know what I'm talking about, then run the actual the uh, batch file because that, that does it for you. You don't need to turn on fancy execution privileges in PowerShell. So there's two things in the package, and it updates your project. Um, there's a whole bunch of uh, changes to things. It doesn't, I mean, there's one, if you look carefully at that graphic, there's a UAP application view min width equals width 320. Uh, that we uh, deliberately haven't removed that, but that uh, is how you used to specify the minimum width mm -hmm. uh, of allowed of the application window. I haven't removed that uh, automatically because if it was in your manifest, you probably want to, the replacement for that is some code. So this is kind of a clue to you, a pointer that you might need. There is an API to uh, instead to specify that uh, uh, um, actually in code. It's not in the manifest anymore. Um, so it does most of what you need, but you might still to make some changes. Some of the things you might need to do is if you've got any package dependencies in right. your manifest, I haven't tried to do anything with them. Um, Jerry didn't when he wrote this. Uh, <laughs> but you have to add all the publisher stuff about for the dependencies. So you need some manual stuff there. Um, you need to add the UAP. Uh, it is still UAP, despite the fact we've moved to UWP. In Visual Studio, they, yep. they haven't quite moved on f yet. Um, so some of, the, uh, some of the extensions, you might need to put that. It's, uh, it's kind of a bit of a try it and see. If, if, you, if you compile your project, um, it, will, uh, it will tell you if there's anything in the manifest it doesn't like. And it's kind of, typically, it's put the UAP colon uh, prefix on stuff to make it work. Yep. And then suddenly, not on some stuff. It's on so, like, so yeah, it's kind of confusing. Yeah, yeah. and Eight will, out of nine. this will be this will be properly documented when we get nearer to RTM. That's right. Um, the other thing to look out for if you're upgrading a Windows 8.1 store app rather than uh, uh, than uh, from phone, then uh, actually some of the the tile assets uh, have changed. So uh, for a store app, it was Square 70 by 70 logos, part of the default assets for your default tile. Um, it's now we've converged on the phone one, which is Square 71 by 71. Mm -hmm. Which is great, by the way, because yeah. now there's only one set of assets you create, not a group for phone and a group for Windows. Yeah. And then there's a few other elements that have been deprecated. Um, some of these I've taken out. Foreground text equals light, I think I've taken out in the tool. Uh, or Jerry did. And there toast capable equals true. You don't have to specify toast capable in the manifest anymore. Um, so that's deprecated as well. So there's a few kind of things here um, which you can pick out. Uh, you, just get, you just get toast. That's great. Yeah. That's right. This is this um, preferred launch, the windowing mode, and the preferred, lo preferred launch view size. This is the code that replaces that manifest thing. That's right. So this is the code, application view, get for current view, set preferred min size. So it's not just the width, but a height as well. So you're saying to the system, actually, this is the preferred one. Now, that's weird. This is how <laughs> this <way. laughs> This is you at the back there. Who's, what is this? That is so that funny. That is spooky. So Why don't you go, it's at the conference room. <laughs> this is the phantom, the phantom uh, toast, the phantom notification that pops up at this time every day, and we have no idea what's going on. They've probably got lunch there. We should go check it out. I think we should. <laughs> it's so vague, it's probably employees going for drinks or something. Well, that'd be a good idea. Uh, hurry. So we all right, sorry. Yeah, no, anyway, <laughs> let's move on. Yeah. MSDN documentation for all the manifest changes. Um, there is actually already some preview docs, uh, URI there. Um, that by the time you watch this recording uh, of this MVA in- Right now. I don't know, yeah, it's probably already out of date is what I'm about to say. So uh, yeah. just, uh, just but we keep an actually, eye on. It was, they released the docs yesterday, so we know we're actually teaching it slightly out of date. Oh, I didn't know that. No, I'm only making that up. <laughs> <laughs> by okay. the time, we guarantee by the time you watch, by the time we said it, it's out of date. Yeah. Sorry, go That's ahead. right. Yeah. So moving on. So it's obviously, we're still building this. Uh, we're in the last stages of building it, but there's still a lot of stuff happening. That's true. All right, let's run through this. Um, right, this is the Contoso cookbook demo. So I'm going to switch over to Visual Studio, uh, and let's run through this. This is a popular demo. Uh, let's run it out. This is the 8.1 version of the app. Um, I'm sure some of you have seen this. And you can select a region and then go to the recipe list. And it's nice and rich, got lots of photos. And there's the details of the recipe. And you can go over to ingredients and, and over to the notes. And you, actually here, you can, you can actually take a picture. You can pin tiles. You can share. It's all kind of nice, rich, rich sort of an app. Got a lot of the features that, um, uh, that you would build in. Now then, let's go in and upgrade this. We're going to switch over to Windows Explorer just so I can open a command prompt in that folder. That's the easy way. 
And now I'm going to run that upgrade uh, PowerShell script that I told you about. I've got it stored, a copy stored in my C scripts. Run upgrade to uwp.bat. Uh, that's it, classical UI, fantastic. Yeah, it's loads really of information, great. says it does it. That's the best UI I've ever seen you put together. But yeah, it's that good. <laughs> right, now we're re reloading. And look, the project's changed to Windows Universal. So now we're all ready. Ship it. Ship it, it's Ship ready it. to it's go. Yeah, Wait a minute, like, you're going into the manifest? Yeah, I'm just showing you. There's that um, minimum view. You can, we can get rid of that. If that's really important, we can put the code in. But actually, I'm not going to bother at this okay. stage. Um, other stuff looks to be okay. We can save that change. So let's go and build and see how we're doing with this converted project. Uh, we've got one failure. Wait a minute. All right, here we go. This is the back pressed event args, which is this was a phone project. So this is the hardware button back press stuff, which is a phone only API. Now, actual fact, we could use the mobile extension SDK and put adaptive code around this. Um, but the proper way of handling this in a UWP app is actually to use the universal backpressed API, ah. which is in just at your core system navigation manager dot get for current view, and I'll talk about that in a moment, dot uh, back requested. And we can hook that event handler up, and there we go, and we'll say, we'll just accept that name. And actually, the logic inside it pretty much, pretty much the same. So we've got frame uh, there, and we can get rid of that one. Now actually, although I've wired this up, this is actually in the wrong place because we haven't actually got a frame at that point and that on the constructor. So you really need to, it's too soon. So I'm just gonna pop this down the bottom of the launched event uh, method. So that allows, that's the right place for it. And now throughout our app, a back press on the hardware back button. Now, what about this? It, Windows Phone app, this is Windows Phone only code from a universal project. There's two instances of this. What was all this about? Okay, now this is interesting. Mm. The pick single file and continue API on the file open picker was the, the weird phone variant of the pick single file async. But now we've standardized in UWP around the single pick single file async. So that simplifies thing a lot. We need an async on that. Um, that was a just nice a continuation. So all of that curious reactivation code goes. Thank so you. I can hear cheering in the background from, uh, from Yay. phone devs. Yay. Um, and some of the other logic that was to do with that, this was the reactivation plumbing, if you like. We can get rid of all of that. We don't need it anymore. Yeah. So we've got a nice, clean solution. Yeah, it was clutter -prone. It was clutter, yeah. And that means all of this as well, we can just delete it. So none of that stuff. We're now standardized just across the- You can't have a pound if, can you? Huh? No. I mean, you yeah, don't no, use sorry. a pound if, yeah. No. That's Hash right. if, sorry, that's what yeah, you want. Yeah, that's right. Now look, the, the processor, it's, we're currently any CPU, which is completely valid in an 8.1, but in the .NET native world, we don't like that anymore. So we're going to Configuration Manager. We can just edit the list of active solution uh, platforms and remove any CPU. So get rid of that. You have to do that. We have to do this, unfortunately. Sometimes you'll, unfortunately, open, a, you'll, you'll open a sample and you'll see it there and it'll cause right. you a little glitch. Yeah. And I'm going to switch to x86, which is appropriate for the desktop, of course, and for the emulator, as it turns out. And let's build again and see how we're doing. Getting closer. Yeah, we might get a clean build this time, I think. It's not complained yet, so we're still building. And let's see. Yep, one succeeded. Definitely Terrific. ship it. Ship it now. <laughs> now you're ready. Yeah. All right, let's try and run it on the desktop. Remember, this was a phone app. Let's try straight away try and run it on the desktop. What is that? This would be nice. Um, it will if it lo if it works. Hey, look. Okay, the uh, splash screen's a bit distorted. Yes, it that's strange. Definitely. So we have to fix that. Um, and hey, we've got a launch the home page. This it, looks almost right. Yeah, that's right. Now we're trying to navigate to the next page. Ah, this is a XAML parse exception. What's the problem here? Um, we drill down to this. Actually, unfortunately, it doesn't give you much information. There's a null inner exception. So the clue here is go and have a look at the XAML page and see, you usually find IntelliSense will give you an indication of what it was it didn't like. Let's fix the artwork first. Yeah. Um, this all scale 240, so actually that isn't quite right because in a UWP, the supported scale factors are 100, 150, um, uh, I forget what they are, 250 is the one actually. So I've already got this artwork that I prepared so earlier. Instead of 240, it's 250. 250, yeah, that's right. And the other thing that's changed is the uh, splash screen orientation has changed, the splash screen image, and I've changed that as well. Now let's have a look at that XAML. Let's see if we can fix that problem. 
So down here we go, and let's look for IntelliSense complaining about anything. Oh, it doesn't, can't, can't see anything. Uh, oh, uh -huh. okay, uh, now we have, now the designer has come up. Phone look, accent. phone accent brush. So these were phone only th uh, resources, and, and we don't have those anymore. So let's replace, let's create our own new brush, which just, we're gonna replace that. So we're gonna create a solid color brush. I'm gonna give it a name of, um, well, this XP. is interesting. So you're going to fake as if that brush is still there. Well, no, actually, I'm just I'm going to create one that's going to work across all of our, U, our UWP platforms. So the color I'm going to use for that is actually the theme resource of the system accent color, which essentially is the same thing uh, as that phone accent brush. Oh, I see. But it's universal. It's right the way across everything. So now we can use that. Uh, for our UI, regardless of where it's going to run, uh, and we just all we have to do is replace that with our new brush that we've defined, and life is good. Let's have a look for anything else. Uh, okay, we've got a couple more style problems here, so the styles are clearly a problem. Um, these are phone-specific list view ones. I'm just going to use one of the standard. Uh, let's say the caption one is probably okay. I mean, you can tweak these later on to change the styling a little bit to suit your particular app, but that at least gets us running. What about the other main page, recipe detail page? Mm. Let's have a look in there as well. Um, and if we, yeah, we've got another one of these phone accent brushes. So let's just uh, get rid of that. And f let's have a look further down. Yes, there's another one. Okay, so hopefully that's all the XAML style problems. So all the other XAML is absolutely fine. We've got no issues with it. Let's see if we can run it again on the desktop, see how we get on. Getting closer. We are getting closer, yeah. So, ah, that oh, no, fix that. That's looking good. Yeah, I need to change the background color to red. Um, then let's go over here, and we got on that page. That's fine. And here's our list. And look, it's all looking good. There is a problem, though. There was no back button on that. Yeah, how do you navigate? How do you navigate back? So I'm going to add a new folder. And I've got, uh, we're going to enter. Uh, Mr. Nixon on my right here has created this fantastic control, which is in template 10, our template. And this is an intelligent back button control. And what this does is it's, you can just drop it on your canvas. Let's build it first so we can use it. You drop it on your canvas and it will be visible on desktop, but invisible on like phone where there's a hardware back button. Yeah. So, uh, and now we need to put this on the canvas. And what I'm gonna do is gonna change the title template of our pivot. Let's do a custom one of them. So I'm gonna edit the additional templates of that, create an empty one, um, an empty template. So I'll call it, give it an intelligent name, pivot data template. And then I'm going to, the first thing I'm going to do is just put back into it the, uh, the page header, text block equals, the text is the Contosa cookbook, of course. Uh, so that's on there. There we go, that's back on. Nice. And then in my template grid, I'm going to just create a couple of columns, uh, change the size of that to a, actual physical pixels. And then let's move the, uh, the text block over to column one. So it's over on the right. And get rid of this weird margin it's put in. Don't need that. So now the, that's the header. That leaves us a bit of space. And I can drag Jerry's back button and drop that into the first column. Try and get the focus. Can't quite manage it on this. Okay, we should drop it into there. There's a little bit of margin going on there. Yeah, a bit of margin. So I'm going to right click and remove those lar margins that's put on. Reset all. So that's nice. And then we can change the size of this column to auto, which means while it's there, it will make space for it. When it's not there, like on a phone, that column will be shrunk. So let's run it on the desktop. I've already done it on one page at the moment, but you know, obviously you do that on your other pages. And there we go. And we can go back. Look at that. That's it's just fabulous. awesome. No code required. Now, of course, on the phone, we can run this and go down to there. Uh, and uh, just to prove the point that this UI, try again, there we go. The phone's come up and here's our uh, phone version, our UWP phone version of it. No back button on the top there, but everything is working just great. Nice. Yeah, there we go, nice rich app. So that wasn't too painful, huh? I didn't think so. No, oh. that's right. Now, yeah, there's some things to pay attention to, but not a nightmare yeah, of, of no, changes. Not a nightmare of changes. Now, obviously, your, your mileage will, will, will vary, mm -hmm. uh, depending on how sophisticated your app is. But or, I hope you can see there the compa basic compatibility between the two. Uh, and the other thing that you obviously need to 
be aware of is that um, the desktop UI there was just one case and you, not, you need to think about uh, narrow and wider and, and there's a few snap points. We have a design session in the NVA where we kind of talked about the different design snap points you want to think about. So it's not as simple as that. There's still more work you need to do on getting a responsive and design. And there's not a subtext here of we're saying now that you're bringing your application from Windows 8 to Windows 10, now that you can support all these other devices as well, Go ahead and make it work great on the phone. Go ahead and make it work great on the desktop. Go ahead and make it look great on Xbox. That's not what we're saying. Because part of this migration or port or upgrade from Windows 8 is just to get it working. And you can decide which device you're actually going to run and target. Yep, that's right. Um, so these are we come up with six steps that you want to kind of think about. Um, and some or all, some or none of these will apply to your particular app, but uh, we're calling these out as some things you need to uh, to think about. Um, I'm not going to read that list because actually I'm going to go deeper into each of these. So the first thing is have a look as for compiler conditional stuff. So you often see this in universal projects you're bringing up from 8.1 because right. because of the shared project where you have code in there that was conditionally included at compile time into the phone head um, or the uh, or the desktop head and so you need to just review all of that stuff and a lot of it was kind of tended to be around the hard the back navigation and I showed you in that demo uh, the kind of correct way of handling that uh, but there's, there's stuff like that that you need to just review each of those and make sure that the code that uh, is work in your UWP version is appropriate. Um, so the handling the back button, you saw that there's a lot about that, and we talked about it, we talk about this in a lot more detail in the uh, the navigation uh, framework session in this MVA. So if you haven't watched that, well, I recommend you go and have a look at that. There is this single converged back button API in the UWP API set, and you saw me use it in that demo. Uh, so the the way you do that is in the on navigator two. You can you this is your your the kind of the sort of thing where you check for the visibility of the app view back button. This is in the Chrome uh, Chrome one, um, and you can set it to be visible or collapsed. Um, the back requested is off hanging off the uh, system navigation manager as well. This is how you hook the the back button API. Um, the other thing is to, about conditional code. We had a session all about that as well. So you might need to add a reference to the plat to platform extension SDKs. That's something that you need to consider. It depends on the APIs you're using. We reckon that the majority of the code you're going to need in your app will be in the, Jerry says 86%, will well, be in the universal API In set. the lab, it was 60, 60, 86%. 86% in the yeah. lab. On the street, it's, a, it's more like 85, I guess. Okay. But 